Hey guys, how's it going? I want to first thing I want to say is happy December. Yep, we are in December, and I can smell this year coming to a close. I mean, I know not only the music to my ears, but I'm also saying thank God. I mean, this year really took a miserable toll on us when lockdown approached due to the pandemic coming out of, coming out of nowhere. So I'm just thrilled that we're in December right now. And I believe we all know what this means when it comes to December. Christmas will be coming up will be coming up this month. So I'm really looking forward to the holidays. Yep. And I got a feeling that Christmas will also be like what it's gonna also be like what Thanksgiving was last month. So just yeah, you know what to do. Just keep yourself safe, stay healthy, try not to break social distancing. That's the last thing you wanna do. Remain remain where you are. Just don't break social distancing, all right? All right, so for today's poem video, I believe the last the last video I did was, let's see, I did a very special message to you all saying happy Thanksgiving and hope you spend a wonderful time with your and hope you spend a wonderful time with your family. So the last poem video I did was number 67. So, all right, we are heading into number 68. And for today's number 68, I have a very good poem that is based on what's coming up on December 6th, which is also this Sunday. As you may all know, I am a huge wrestling fan, a huge wrestling fanatic. I've been watching wrestling since I was 12. And every Wednesday night, I love watching NXT because you're witnessing personal rivalries and the matches and the battles and the wars and the final stands are really taking things to a whole new level of throwdowns and... Yeah, mostly throwdowns as ever. Yeah. Like I said, ever since NXT made the jump to um, USA Network, it's been very skyrocketing. I mean, every Wednesday night, there's always something new to watch. There's always a new episode available to watch every Wednesday when you're looking for something to keep yourself entertained. And pretty much, uh, yeah, entertained and pretty much a lot. Entertain as always. Actually, something to keep your eyes thrilled as always. Even thrilled when it comes to a throwdown match or a throwdown war, you'll never forget. So, so yeah, this is what I, that's what I love about NXT. So for today's poem video, this one is based on what NXT has coming up this Sunday. Yep, NXT's takeover returns, and this time it's returning the one thing that I love very much. This happens every year when it comes to a rivalry. Reaches not only <clears throat> how do I put it like this. I love it when it comes to a rivalry that not only reaches an all-time high, or even when it's skyrocketing as ever, but also reaches but also reaches its crescendo when it think when it gets really out of hand and it gets personal as ever. And right now, I'm witnessing two rivalries that have been. Pretty much brewing as ever. We've got one on the men's side and the other on the women's side. And this is what brings the one thing all together when you want to sell your rivalry straight to the end. So for today's poem video, yeah. So, yeah, today's poem video, I've got a poem based on what's coming up on December 6th. And December 6th, my friends, NXT TakeOver returns. This time, it's returning for the one thing that you all, even I, love very much. So, get ready as I say these words. December 6th, NXT TakeOver returns for WAR GAMES! That's right. You heard me correctly. WAR GAMES has returned. And this is the second year that the Women's WAR GAMES will be back. Yep. We've got a lot going on in the war games. The one I'm really looking forward to would be, how do I put it this way? We've got the Undisputed Era versus Mr. I am better than everybody else. Yeah, this moron, the last time we saw him, Adam Cole sued his mouth shut with a pair of sunrise just to end the rivalry forever. And then what? A few months later, this moron came back after being responsible for taking out the Undisputed Era one by one. He even... Helped two of his new adversaries score their first taste of gold, who I was right behind of, but the way they won it, yeah, not what I had in picture, or have not what I pictured see coming as ever. And then also, he got the Bruiserweight to join his side to help him get rid of the Unspirit Air forever. So, if you're wondering who this moron is, I'm going to tell you this. The Unspirit Era at this year's War Games will face no other than... The same dude that Adam Cole has had has had a severe beef with before. And that moron will be no other than Mr. Pat McAfee. Oh, God. 
Every time I say his name, just reminds me how he could never shut up when he whenever he runs his mouth. Yeah, McAfee was the reason that the Other Spirit Era was taken out the last time we saw him. And I remember back in the summertime when he took on Adam Cole, he tried to show everyone that he was a better wrestler besides being a, ve being a better talk show host. Unfortunately for Mr. McAfee, he got his ass kicked. Actually, how do I say this? Unfortunately for Mr. McAfee, he got his ass kicked after Adam Cole took care of him. And I say thank you, Mr. Cole. And everybody, well, you know the rest. They all couldn't stand Pat McAfee. A lot of people were telling the truth that they were telling the truth of how Pat McAfee really was. Even Sam Roberts told the truth. I believe he wanted a tweet that says, I've been trying to tell you all along, Pat McAfee is not the guy you really want to have, you want to be pals with. Or even want to hang with. And let's put it this way. Pat McAfee, he became the one thing I always describe, I always see in some kind of fellow when he starts something that becomes a very, very controversial problem. He becomes nothing but a condescending and controversial moron, as always. And that happens to be Pat McAfee, right up the alley. Not only up the alley, but right at where he is right now. <clears throat> yeah. And Mr. Sam Roberts, if you're watching this, yeah, you were really right all along. Pat McAfee is a moron, as always. More like ass ever. Yeah, Pat McAfee, a moron. A moron of all morons. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So this problem is based on what's coming up on December 6th. And that will be NXT's TakeOver War Games. So, yep. We've got two war games that are really going to be skyrocketing on December 6th. Like I said, on the men's side, we've got the Undisputed Era versus McAfee and his new entourage. That happens to be him, the Bruiserweight, and the new dudes who still have the NXT World Tag Team titles. Who I was, so, who I was a, a support fan to until they showed their true colors. And those dudes would be no other than the USA UK tag team known as Danny Burch and Only Lorcan. Yeah. Also, now I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to the second Women's War Games that's also coming up. That's right, the Women's Wars Games happens again for the second time. And this time... We've got Shotzi Blackheart soldiers, as in Shotzi and her team, taking on Miss Noballs, the wife of Mr. Noballs Gargano, Candice LeRae, and her mercenaries. Now you're wondering how this all come together on the women's side. Let's see. If you were, if you were, if you were to take a look back how this all started, you have Candice gathering up her mercenaries. And on her mercenaries, I kept picturing that she had pretty much everyone together. That included her, the Wombat, Dakota Kai, John Gonzalez, the Wombat's insurance policy, and of course, Candace's new mercenary, Indy Hartwell. But instead, Candace found another mercenary that happened to pledge her allegiance by joining her side. And that would be the same woman that turned on Ember Moon, who was ready to join her to take care of Candace's mercenary. Unfortunately, I suspected something the last time like that happened when Tony Storm showed true colors. That's right. Tony Storm showed true colors by turning on Miss Ember Moon. And that really surprised me. Not only surprised me, but shocked me right out of the gate. So now Candace really has her mercenaries all together. That includes her, the Wombat. The Wombat's insurance policy, Johnny Gonzalez, and of course, Miss Tony Storm, the fourth final Conrad joined Candace's mercenaries. So, yeah. And as of right now, you're probably wondering what shot does Shotzi have any Conrad's with her? She's got two that have joined her. First up, and I was watching these videos because they were posted on YouTube these past few days. I've watched Miss Amber Moon join Shotzi, seeing how Shotzi's getting ready for war games and preparing for everything. Then came the second individual to join Shotzi's team. That's right, Miss. This is my brutality. Miss Rhea Ripley, the nightmare. She also joined Shotzi's team because she wants to help her take care of Candace's mercenaries that have caused rough shots right out of the gate as ever. So yeah, so we've got Amber Moon and Rhea Ripley joining Shotzi's team. Shotzi needs one more individual to join her team. And if she can find one more individual, she'll be ready for war games. Now, the question is, who could the final individual be that can join Shakti's team? Some say it could be Il Shirai. Or I'm thinking it could be someone that we have not seen. I keep thinking that what was someone that we have not seen since he was last taken out? I mean, made her return to help Shakti take care of Kansas mercenaries. 
I keep thinking, what if the Welsh wizard herself, Tegan Knox, came back to help Shotzi? We're not sure. We'll just have to find out where this goes as Shotzi continues to look for a final comrade to help her join her for war games uh, to face Candace's mercenaries inside the huge cage. I'm telling you, December 6th, the war will be awake. Actually, what am I saying? The war is the war is about to arrive. And you will have two war games where rivalries are going to be settled inside and they will come to an end depending on whoever survives and gets the victory for their team. And to tell you this, one of my favorite members of war games, I mean, this is like the fourth time war games is happening. I remember last year when the first women's war games happened. It was Team Rhea versus Team Shayna. And Team Rhea found themselves at a disadvantage, a 2 and 4 disadvantage, because the Wombat showed true colors when she turned on, well, you know how that went. And of course, yeah. And then we had, actually another member I remember was when you had, you had Ricochet, the Bruiser Way, and War Raiders taking on the Under Spirit Era inside War Games. That was the one I could never forget. Now here we are in 2020 with War Games returning for the fourth time. This time, you've got the Under Spirit Era looking to end McAfee and his entourage inside War Games. Under Spirit Era, they've been looking forward to this since McAfee took them out one by one. First, Adam Cole, who was introduced to the British powerhouse known as Mr. Ridge Holland. Yeah, it all happened when Cole and O'Reilly, I mean, it all happened when Kyle O'Reilly and Finn Balor had their match at TakeOver 31. And it took place back in October for the NXT World Title. After the match, the dudes shook hands, but what they saw right in front of them was an ambush Adam Cole dumped to the ground by and at the hand, by the hands of Mr. Ridge Holland. And then here's another thing. Brizango, who were World Tag Team Champions at the time, were set to defend their titles against Unspirit Era until Strong and All and Fish were taken out. And I think you know how this all went. O'Reilly thought he had backup to take care of McAfee and his entourage. Unfortunately, McAfee put his whole entourage together when the Bruiserweight showed true colors, having O'Reilly taken out. Then, when Bal had a surprise for McAfee and his entourage, it led to the returning Undisputed Era coming for straight revenge. So get ready because December 6th, revenge will be in the air and someone is going to pay for their sins. So that's why I have this poem with me for today to read to you guys. And it's based on war games coming up December 6th. So get ready as I read this to you guys. Okay, my friends, here we go. I've got the poem for War Games, so get ready as I read this to you all. War Games. War Games is about to arrive this year. Judgment Day is almost near. I see the front line is coming to exist. Revenge will not fade as you resist. When you see the size of a huge cage, it tells the story. <coughs> it tells the story of a war being waged. You can hear the sirens making a sound. It's time to stand your ground. The war starts with someone crossing the line. You see the chance of growing a spine. Your eyes can sense justice being alive. And justice is something we do not thrive. Someone and their team will be left for dead. Picture the blood being no other than spread. Come December 6th, my friends, the war arrives. That right. <clears throat> so there you have it, my friends. That was the poem based, that was the poem 
based on what's coming up on December 6th with NXT's TakeOver War Games. And just to let you know, this was the poem called War Games because War Games means a lot to everyone, including me. Including everyone around the world. I mean, if you're wondering how War Games came together, I mean, take a look. This was all from the creative mind of Dusty Rhodes. May he rest in peace, my friends. This was all his creation. I mean, War Games was originally known in WCW before it made a return by joining NXT. And you take a look back to the first ever War Games where it came from the Unspeed Era, who made history when they won the first ever War Games. So now this year, this is number four, War Games Returns. We've got rivalries brewing straight in the air. And you're wondering how this is going to end. Come December 6th, you will have to see for yourselves when the war arrives. You will have to see how the war becomes. You will have to see how the war is when it arrives. A war like this never fades when it comes to someone crossing the line. Yep, December 6th. This is going to be real good. A war to the end. We've got the men's war games and the women's war games. And if you're wondering what's my favorite most likely from war games, I gotta, go, I gotta go with the women's war games. They've been really kicking things straight into a higher gear, even skyrocketing as always. So, yep, yeah, I enjoy the men's war games too, but I'm also a huge fan of the women's war games because now you're seeing the women's war games, kit, yeah, really bringing it out what you want to see right in front of you. So, yeah, this is going to be real good. So, my friends, I hope you enjoy this poem. And I hope you get ready for this Sunday because December 6th, the war games will not be denied. The war games will not be, how do I say this? Well, you already know. So war games is about to be, it's about to be alive. And we'll show you what happens when someone crosses the line. When someone crosses the line or make things very personal, there's only one way to sell this. And that's where you have eight individuals on, on four teams. Eight individuals that would love to end each other. End each other. Sorry, just had a nice lunch. So, so you know, so you know, what I was saying, you have four individuals that would love to end each other, and the only way that is going to end is if, and the only way that's going to end is where war games comes in. I remember Regal. I remember Regal saying this every time he saw a rivalry getting out of hand, or even when chaos was this was descending. Was descend? Yeah. He, he always saw chaos always erupting right out of the gate. And he would always say this. I guess you know how this ends, my friends. A lot of me tell you what's going to happen. If this is a war you want, then it's a war you're about to have. And about to, this is a war you're about to get as ever. A lot of me introduce what's going to happen. You could be inside of war games. When you hear those words, that means war games is coming right out of the gate. And come December 6th. The war will definitely arrive. So I hope you guys enjoyed this poem. I hope you all loved it. I mean, like I said, December sixth is gonna be a, it's gonna be a very, it's gonna be a very, very fight to the end, for the men's war games and the women's war games. And I all and I hope you all enjoyed this poem. So feel free to watch this. I know. Feel free to watch this, even if you have to watch it again, just to get yourself psyched up for war games. So. I hope you enjoyed this, and that's about it. So that is it for today's poem. I believe this was, this is number 68. The last one was 67 on a, on a poem called the UK. I think it was something like, yeah, the UK speech serenity. So, yeah, that's the one. So this is number 68. This is War Games, the poem I have read, and I hope you all enjoyed this. So I just want to say I hope you guys are ready for this month because, Christmas will be coming up, and I hope you guys do whatever it takes to keep yourself busy and occupied. Even come, even when, it, even when it comes to watching my videos, so feel free to watch them. Just keep yourself busy and occupied, and remember to keep yourself busy when it comes to the holidays. Try to be careful though, because I know the holidays can get very nuts though. So try to keep yourself at a state, at a very calm and steady, at a very calm pace. So, all right, you guys, I want to say thank you for your time, and I will see you on the next pump video that I will make. So, take care, try to enjoy December, and I'll see you guys next time.